pro striking fighter and friend Fabian Edwards lost in his world title fight against Johnny Eblin on the Bellator card just gone. So I was in Dublin for the last week with Fabian. I did his corner for the fight and absolutely gutted. It was a really heartbreaking defeat, if I'm honest with you. As a trainer, this was my first attempt at a world title. Obviously, Fabian's older brother, Leon Edwards, is the current UFC welterweight champion. I've helped Leon in the past with some of his camps, some of his training. I think it helped him for the Belal Mohammed fight. I was helping him out when he was due to fight Kamzat and cornering him against Diaz. I've known them both the lads for a while now, and then I've, I've been helping Fabian for his last couple of fights. I helped him get a good win over Gegard Masasi. So I'm not gonna give away too much tactically. I might do something for the patrons. If you go head over there to my Patreon page and put a little bit more in-depth detail over what kind of we was doing in the training camp and how the fight was playing out. Obviously due to copyright restrictions, I'm not gonna be able to put up too much of the footage of the fight. But long story short, Fabian was doing really well. I've had a look at the judges scorecards post fight. We had one judge giving it a draw, one judge giving it to Eblin, and one judge had Fabian up. I felt like Fabian was edging it, but it was very competitive. It was close. And basically us in the corner, me, Dave Lavelle, his brother Leon, and Bradley Hill, the jiu-jitsu coach, we all felt like Fabian needed to put his stamp on it. And we wanted him to push forward a little bit more and not respect Johnny so much. The opening round, there was a lot of feeling out, but I felt like Fabian was letting Johnny get away with a little bit too much. A few leg kicks were landing, a few punches were landing that Fabian could clearly see coming and he just wasn't quite pulling the trigger to counter back. In the corner, we were kind of telling him, like, look, get on him now, no more respect. When he kicks you, kick him straight back. You're seeing things coming, let's start putting those counters on and let's follow up on the counters. Fabian's wrestling defense was unbelievable. Obviously his brother is the wrestling coach at Renegade. He leads the Monday morning sessions, which is the hardest session of the week for all the fighters. And the anti-wrestling was just on point. Just the way he was able to separate the hands, the way he was able to break around, disengage. And that is how Fabian caught Johnny with a beautiful elbow, which sliced him open. Now this for me was the defining moment of the fight for both men. Because in my opinion, obviously having spoken to Fabian, he took his foot off the gas when he realized he'd cut Johnny Eblin. There was only like 30 or 40 seconds left towards the end of the second round. And Fabian kind of like stepped off a bit. I don't think Johnny realized how bad he was cut, but he knew it was there, it was bad. And then us in the corner had no idea how bad the cut was because it wasn't bleeding. Weird, like a cut that big, you'd be expecting it to be bleeding profusely, but it, it wasn't and we weren't quite aware in the corner. When Fabian's came back between rounds two and three, he keeps looking over his shoulder. His brother was like, stop doing that, concentrate. But I think that's because Fabian, who was in there, who was directly in front of Johnny, could see how bad it was. I think he half thought the fight was gonna be stopped then between rounds. When round three's begun, Johnny obviously in his corner team knew how bad the cut was. They knew Johnny needed to basically get it over and done with. Fabian on the other end of the spectrum feels like, you know, the fight's there and done. And he got caught with a, a double up right hand. It was, yeah, really, really tough for us to watch in the corner because we, we just felt like Fabian almost got blown out of the water in that third round. There was 15 seconds, 20 seconds maybe. The round had barely begun. Johnny Eblin comes on the front foot. Fabian kind of gives him a little bit too much respect, goes on the back foot, throws a knee. Then as he's coming back from his knee, tries to throw a lead hook and Johnny doubled up that right hand and caught him. It was just, yeah absolutely absolute shit for us because it was right in front of us johnny then obviously got the finish he you know didn't waste no time got straight on top of fabs and then his reaction after in my opinion was appalling i was disgusted in him <sighs> you know let's not get into that and just take away from it you know he's a stud he's a fantastic athlete from a fantastic team at american top team they've got great coaches over there million dollar facility. I personally have met Dan Lambert after Fabian for Austin Vanderford and lost him and I'd cornered Fabian then. It was the COVID era. It was all the, amidst the pandemic. It was in Connecticut. There was no one allowed in the arena. And after Fabian had lost to Vanderford, Dan Lambert came out of his way to come tell me in the, in the backstage area that he felt Fabian would one day become a world champion. And he said, whatever you're doing in your gym, keep doing it. And I took a lot from that. We're gonna get back to the drawing board and rebuild Fabian into the champion that he is. He's gonna be a world champion. I've got 100% belief in that kid. He's only been training for, I think, seven years in the sport. <laughs> he was 10-0 as an amateur. I think all finishes but one. As a pro, he came out the blocks, you know, he's. Got a bright future, he's still only 30 years of age. He's come from nothing, let me tell you nothing. I ain't gonna get into it, but yeah, turn his life around. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. Again, if you wanna check over a more in-depth breakdown, I'll probably put that up on the Patreon. You can follow me over there, help support the channel and keep the proverbial lights on. 
I hope you appreciate a little bit of an insight into what it is to be training an elite world level fighter. And yeah, appreciate you all. Pro striking out, I'll catch you later.